Hello, my name is Michelle, and you're listening to Profit is a Choice. When I started my podcast journey in September of 2018, I knew that I would only do it if I could have the time and the resources to do it well and consistently. I've mentioned that too many times. I've now wrapped up three full years of podcasting, and this is the start of year four. So I just really want to thank you all for continuing to be willing to listen, to share, and to talk about the choices that make our businesses and our lives more profitable. I would love for you to leave a review of the podcast on your favorite listening app. And um, I really believe there's more to be done and uncovered. So cheers to the beginning of year four of Profit is a Choice. Every day, empowered entrepreneurs are taking ownership of their company financial health and enjoying the rewards of reduced stress and more creativity. With my background as a financial software developer, owner of multiple businesses in the interior design industry, educator and speaker, I coach women in the interior design industry to increase their profits, regain ownership of their bottom line, and to have fun again in their business. Welcome to Profit is a Choice. Every year about this time, um, and when I say every year, I mean the end of a podcasting year, I've done a wrap up of what all I've covered the, you know, that prior year and what I've learned or some nuggets that I think are really important for us to take away. Because like you, I'm always learning and growing. And that's what makes hosting and producing this podcast so profitable for me. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of expense to create a podcast like this, not just money, but time, effort, energy, all the things. But the payoff to hear your stories and to dig in deep is well worth the effort and the investment, at least for me, it is. So I'm going to start this yearly reflection with episode 109. Brandy Bernoski was the one that started the podcast year um, with a conversation about updating our digital strategy. And I love how she really challenged us to consider the consistency of the digital experience we're creating for our viewers, much like we have an experience when we walk into a physical store. What is the digital experience that we are creating? And is it consistent across all platforms? Really a good thing to think about. In episode 110, one of the things you'll notice this year is every twice a month, the first and the third week of the month, I do a solo teaching sharing episode. And so you're going to see a lot of those over this um, past year and moving forward. But in episode 110, I asked you to begin with the end in mind. So this really means to consider how you want things to end up and then plan backwards. And this has been so helpful for me um, in relationships and in building my business. Sometimes just looking forward doesn't give me the clarity that I need. Tracy Reuter describes the difference between organic post, boosted post, and paid advertising, and she helps us consider a plan for what you might need and when you might need it in your business. Next, in episode 112, I shared six ways to remove overwhelm in your business, and I know that we all have had some overwhelm over the past year, and hopefully we'll, we won't have much going forward, but I'm afraid that we might. And two of my favorite takeaways from this episode are to stop and breathe and then focus on the next one thing. The other four ideas aren't too shabby either, but I'll let you either read or listen to get those. Brad Clonard um, shared what financial independence really means for our lives and business and how working with a financial planner can allow us the freedom that we desire. And we even go in to talk about how each of us can define that differently. And so Brad is really a great resource if anyone is looking for a financial planner in the interior design industry. In episode 114, I share how to create barriers to entry for your design firm. In other words, what are your non-negotiables? Because not everybody is our client. And so I'm really kind of creating a barrier for people, if you will, to self-edit out of trying to work with you. It keeps you from having to say no so much. Jeremy and Chandler Quarles joined us next to share how they've integrated their business into their life so that they can create not only the business experience they desire, but the family structure they desire. So this is a really neat one for learning how to merge those two things. 
In episode 116, um, I share some pre-planning tips for the new year. And this is kind of the beginning of the strategic planning focus that I'm going to cover in quite a few of the next solo episodes. But I like to start in the fall getting ready for the next year. And so you're going to be listening to this at the beginning of September and pretty much by October, I've got my feet on the ground running trying to start plans so that in January, things are easy. Shanna Quinn then joined us to talk about job costing in our design firms and why it's important and then how to do it. I often hear the question, am I making money on this project, not just as a company? And so job costing gives you the ability to track that from the start. Next in episode 118, I'll talk about four year-end steps to prepare your business. And so again, focusing at the end of the year for the new year is the key to removing stress when the new year starts. Chris Plakey guides us in leadership and hiring next, and her insights on how to lead with grace and understanding are really great reminders. Um, It's not always the person that's the problem. Sometimes it's how we brought them in and how we set up expectations. And so she's really great at helping us think through that. Chrissy Peterson shares how she determines which projects to take. And that was a really fun episode. We talked about how to look into a cost analysis of benefits to see if a new opportunity is a good fit. And so this could be um, a really awesome episode for those of you um, where the phone is continuing to ring and you just can't say yes to everyone. It kind of goes well with that how to create barriers. Episode 121 is focused on your end planning in the areas of HR, marketing, and finance. And so breaking up these important tasks can allow you to get it all done. Again, this is why I start all the way back in October. Tracy Bresnahan joined us next to share her journey to scale her workroom. And in this episode, we talk about her plans to move to an outside location. She actually saved up three years of rent Um, by paying the rent every month to herself and saving it so that she would be ready. As of right now, she has just completed the move and has been able to see this come to fruition. So that's kind of really cool. Anastasia Harrison shared with us next her business model and how she's integrated architecture into her design business. I know many designers do this and some have considered it. And Anastasia really shows the benefit of this. Silda Guglielmo and I review our year every year um, as part of my podcast and her podcast, the So Much More podcast. Um, And we really just look at how things change, how we plan, learn from each other. And so it it really is a, a fun an interesting conversation just to see how different people attack the idea of planning and review, you know, seeing what the year holds. This year, we discussed the impact of the pandemic and other changes in our industry. I started out 2021 with a focus on finding your why in episode 125. And I really believe if we know our why and we keep it top of mind, not just a side exercise to do and check off, that it really can guide how we build our business and make decision making easier. I know for me, I go back to it all the time. I have my why and my um, company values written down and I use them. I mean, I really use them to, to make decisions. Katie Saunders shared the top ways to define our brand beyond our style, meaning our brand isn't just the aesthetic that we use to design. It's so much deeper, and we have a great conversation about it here. Lori May shares how building relationships and collaborations with vendors has been the basis of her business success, and finding a business whose why and values align is important. And so she shares a little bit about how that has impacted her business. Strategic plans are the conversation of the year for me. And so in episode 129, I share with you why you need one. Actually, I share five reasons that you need one. Um, And one is just to give you an idea of where to go instead of ending up somewhere you didn't want to (laughs) be. Julia Hash built her drapey workroom on purpose, which means intentionally. And she shares with us how she started that intentional planning from the very beginning. Okay, I know I talk about getting ready for the strategic plan. We've talked about all the pieces and parts. And in episode 131, I tell you how to put it all together. So please give this one a listen and try to start your plan. You'll thank me and I promise you'll do that. 
Rosa Farino has a background in construction, and this knowledge and skill set greatly impacted her opportunities in business growth. And so she's going to share in this episode how this could also be important for your design firm, understanding the construction piece, not just the pretty piece. Let's talk team. Yep. Episode 133 is about building your dream team. You know when somebody is not in the right seat in your business. And so in this episode, we're going to talk a little bit more about how to make sure you're getting the right butts in the right seats, doing the right work, which makes it profitable for everybody. Laura LaCurzy joins us to share how we should hire the best assistant for our business. Laura owns an agency, and she shares the different types of outsourcing that we can do from independent contractors to agency hires. And so we talk about the differences here so that you can figure out which one's going to be best for you and your needs. Jack Tompkins, super smart guy. He and I had a really great discussion on why it's so important to understand our business finances. And if you know me, you know this was right at my alley. Um, But he also then talks to us about how to create a visual that helps us quickly make decisions. And so just a really fun episode. We we totally geeked out on uh, the numbers. Courtney Durandi is a CPA that was on the the podcast, and she shares the mistakes that we want to avoid when scaling our business. I really think this one is also a must listen, no matter where you are in business growth. And her number one suggestion was to make sure you have timely, accurate, and relevant financial information when you need it. I am astounded at the amount of lateness, if you will, or inability to get your financials. Some of you are running million-dollar businesses, and I'm talking to you right now. Those that are running anything over, I would say, 250, 500,000, if you don't have access to know where your business is almost at all times or within a two-week gap, there is something wrong with financials are being managed in your business. And I want to encourage you right now to start cleaning that up. I know a lot of designers that I work with have amazing businesses, like million and up, and sometimes they're not able to get their finances and they don't understand them or they're not updated properly. And so I just cannot stress enough to you how important this is. And um, if you are one of those businesses, half a million to a million, and you're struggling And to not know those, please get in touch with me because um, my coaching can absolutely solve that problem for you. And episode 138 is really a great follow-up. I share how to set money goals in your business. So if you're just taking what comes instead of creating goals to go after, um, you might want to add that one to your listen list. Krista Grasso shares next how we can incorporate her lean out method into our business. This helps us focus on what's most important at all times instead of getting caught up in the busy work of our business. And um, just really some great ways to think about doing less to do more. Remember those money goals we've been talking about and that we set in episode 138? Well, in episode 140, I share with you how to manage those goals because making them and not managing them is useless. So we want to make the goal and then manage to the goal. Jessica Harling joined me next and we chat all about how to attract and keep good employees. Um, And this last year, I know it's been a challenge for many of my clients. Gaining and retaining the right talent is important as you scale your business. And so this is a great episode to talk about that. I took my business on vacation this past year, and I tell you all about it in episode 142. It really was such a fabulous time, and I highly recommend it. Um, I made a promise to my husband that if he didn't go on my business vacation, I wouldn't bring the business on our family vacation. And I held true to that this year. And so I'm taking the time to really relax and enjoy and plan and dream it just made all the difference. And so episode 142 might give you some encouragement in that area if you need it. Diane Diaz shares with us um, how to create influence in our work and life. And at first I thought, you know, maybe I don't, that's not something we need to talk about because we're not all trying to be influencers, but she has such a great way of looking at the fact that we do still want to create influence, whether we're trying to be, I'm going to put in Um, hashtags and influencer, you know, the next Instagram or TikTok star, but we do want to have influence over our ideal client. We want them to trust us. We want to have influence in our community and in our industry. And so just really um, a super conversation around that. 
Um, in episode 144, I share with you how to really create a stress test for all these goals that you've been making to make sure that they are attainable. Um, because there, it doesn't do us any good to create a goal that really is more like a dream if we don't have some boundaries around it. Being a serial entrepreneur isn't a bad thing either. And Morgan Motzinger um, shares with us how to create a business and um, the fact that she's created a lot of them. She enjoys the business creation part. But what we also realize is while that's fun for her and, and how she kind of pushes through her fears and, and tries and challenges, it's also about finding integrators to keep the businesses running. You know, when you're the person who likes to start them, but maybe not keep them going or finish them, that can be problematic. And so we talk about how to create that structure. Lane McNabb jumped into the deep end when she started her business, like really into the deep end. And critical thinking was the key that kept her and her business from drowning. And so she shares in episode 146 how she has used critical thinking to grow her business and also to add in new income streams. You hear it all the time, and it's true. Mindset is everything. In episode 147, I challenge you to the idea that your mindset is the first place you need to focus if you're going to scale. Right behind that, Desi Creswell wants us to work with ease, and you know, so do I. And Desi shares how to become laser focused so that we're not wasting time and effort on the wrong things in our business. So are you having fun yet? Because many of you are worn out, and so is your team. Episode 149 is where I share ways to bring fun back into the workplace, and we all need some of that. I've had some of my clients come back and tell me that they just did small things, like everybody took their picnic outside and ate together, or they brought in pizza on a Friday, or they took an afternoon and went to the park, or just small things sometimes, even down to what is the music we're listening to on the radio. So if you have a chance, listen to episode 149 and make sure that you're creating some fun in your work environment. Stacy Brown Randall is back on the podcast. Um, and we're talking about creating referral layers. You know, since meeting Stacy a couple of years ago, we were in the, the book together, A Well-Designed Business, Friday Experts, Volume 1. From meeting her, I really do focus more on understanding my referrals, keeping up with information around it, how to handle them, how to give out great referrals. And so it's just another great episode building on this conversation. Episode 151 is about how to give a mid-year review for your team. Keep in mind, every review does not have to have a financial reward. However, everybody wants to know what they're doing great in their work and where improvement is needed. And so having a mid-year review um, can really keep it from being so heavy at the year end. Insurance is something that we could all struggle to either understand or wonder if we have enough or maybe too much. And Michelle O'Connor breaks down kind of some of the ins insurance ideas to help us understand what we need, when we might need it, and how to work with the right agent. July is a great time to review your strategy and set new goals. And in episode 153, I tell you how to do it. Seriously, if you cannot tell that I'm all about creating an intentional strategic plan, one that's really usable, um, just look at my solo podcast throughout the year for a hint. I really think this is important. Leslie Myrick has had to stop and start her business many times. And so she shares with us in the, her podcast episode, kind of a formula for a restart, if you will. She really has some great ideas to get back into design in a new area where you know no one. And if you're in an area, even that you've been in for a while, but you feel like kind of your leads are running dry, this would also be a great one to listen to. If you're the owner of your business, chances are you're also the CEO. And in episode 155, we focus on defining the CEO role and then making time to do it. And, uh, you know, we all need to be reminded of this, including myself. Katrina Maxwell was my photographer for my brand shoot this year. Um, and this experience was so amazing that I had to have her on the podcast to talk about it. Listen in as she shares what she did and what I did to make it so amazing. Every business has a weakness, some maybe more than one. In episode 157, I share how to identify the company weaknesses and use those as a plan for hiring. 
Have you ever been stuck in your business? Yep, I thought so. Misty Malloy and I have a great conversation about how to get unstuck in your business. What is it that will allow you to move forward and learn how to identify what that might be in this podcast? And lastly, as we wrap up the year, Chad Smith shared Side Door with us and how we can use it to create more revenue in our design firms. What's so cool is that this tool can be used in more than one way for the new designer and even for the most experienced designer. Reviewing a year like this really reminds me of the varied experiences in our industry, and it allows me to think bigger than I might sometimes think on my own. And it can do the same for you. You may know this. But each of my podcasts is also a blog post, meaning you can go to the podcast episode on my website and read the notes. On my solo podcast, the full text is there. And on interviews at the bottom is the transcript. And so this is always helpful if you need to read instead of listen or you need to scan through to find something that really stuck out to you. I know I sometimes listen to podcasts when I'm walking or running or doing something and I can't always write something down. So just know that these are also in written form for you to go back to. Profitability is about more than money. And each of these episodes helps build a business piece by piece that makes it more efficient, fun and focused. And all of this creates profit in some way. If you have an idea for a podcast topic, you can email me at michelle1l at scarletthreadconsulting.com. And I also invite you to check out the seven-figure case study on my website at scarletthreadconsulting.com in the resources section. I really want to help you all create businesses that are sustainable and profitable and fun, businesses that allow you to live the life you want to live and take care of your families. And so I invite you to keep listening to the podcast and implement what you hear um, that might work for you and be intentionally profitable because success and profits don't happen by accident. Profit is a Choice is proud to be part of the designnetwork.org, where you can discover more design media reaching creative listeners. Thanks for listening and stay creative and business minded.